Hi, this is Michael Adams for CEO Roaster and Stock Telegraph, and I'm following up with a company that we've already, or I already presented to you. I think that was in December last year, and we're talking to Explorex Resources Inc. trading on the Canadian stock exchange as EX, and also in the German markets. The symbol in Germany is one X E. And the German WKN number is A2H5T7. And so it's my pleasure to have back on the stage, I would guess, uh, Gary Schellenberg. He's a CEO and Mike Sieb, he's president of the company. And um, if you want to get the presentation that we're showing here and get some more detailed information, uh, check out the website, which is explorex.ca. So, guys, uh, thanks for taking the time uh, to talk to me again. Um, there have been a couple of news in the last three to four months yeah, that I did not or only partially covered on my outlets. Um, so it's a great chance for me to uh, get up to speed. And especially the latest news, you acquired a new project in Finland by the name of Outta Lampi, and um, yeah, that's of course, especially what what um, is of my interest. So right now, thank you very much for joining me, and yeah, just start. Gary, you want would like to start? Uh, sure. Thanks for having us again, uh, Michael. Um, as you recall from the last time we uh, had a chance to uh, uh, to talk about the company, we were looking uh, and amassing a, a portfolio of of good cobalt projects, and basically all e-metal projects uh, and we've been uh, look working uh, diligently to to source these uh, these projects as you know that um, there's very very few advanced cobalt projects uh, around the world uh, and uh, we've been fortunate enough here with the Otolumpo uh, that we were able to identify it early and uh, and now we're in the advanced stages of our due diligence on on uh, the acquisition it's um, it, it's a great project uh, it's one that we believe we can bring on stream with in the next three years, uh, and and be a real leader in the um, the new uh, new cobalt production uh, um, that, that that we're really seeing. There's again, uh, there's there's maybe two or three other potential mines to come on stream in the world uh, within that time frame. Um, so uh, we you know we think we're we're well positioned here to meet the demand uh, and reap the benefits for our uh, our shareholders. Um, and uh, you know the Alta Lumpy project, uh, it, it's it's development stage. I guess that's the best way of putting it. It actually had a feasibility study done in 2009, uh, done by another junior company, and of course the metal markets uh, fell out of bed in 2000. We all knew what happened then, and uh, they never did follow through with it. And uh, um, you know Mike has been. Uh, um, you know, uh, intimately involved with the project uh, in its due diligence, and uh, maybe uh, you know Mike can give a little bit more uh, flavor to the project. Uh, um, you know, at, at this point. Uh, thanks, Gary. Uh, yes, the uh, the Outer Lumpy uh, deposit uh, is in one of the uh, actually one of the most renowned uh, historic uh, mining districts in the world. It's the old uh, Udukampu mine uh, in uh, southeastern uh, Finland. Uh, that was originally discovered in 1911, and it produced for a, a phenomenal 89 years. Uh, the original Kareti ore body uh, was four kilometers in length and predominantly silver. Uh, you can see here in in the old photo uh, the uh, the old workings in the front, and then the uh, the Kareti shaft, uh, which is the uh, the center point feature of our our property in the distance. Okay. This is a, an ongoing uh, operation uh, or operational area. Uh, you can see uh, the uh, Kiladi, uh, the mine to, to the northeast of the Udukampu town site, and, and the Lukanladi mill uh, to the northwest. Uh, these are ongoing operations uh, that has basically produced uh, an excellent infrastructure and uh, an industrial center that has built up pretty much over the last 100 years. So, so this is the area uh, that we're walking into, uh, a well-known, uh, well-accepted uh, mining jurisdiction. And kind of taking a look, uh, you can see in, in the uh, the bottom about uh, 200 meters below surface was the old uh, uh, Kareti ore body. And, and this ore body uh, extended for four kilometers and the outer lumpy uh, deposit is a satellite deposit uh, to the main Kareti ore body. Uh, this was discovered uh, and uh, drilled uh, 
probably greater than uh, 200 drill holes have been drilled into the Outalampi deposit uh, over quite a number of, of years and, and operators uh, with some real significant development associated with it. Let me it has a really question, good. Mike. So, so yeah, go ahead. Mike. So, um, go one slide back. So, the um, Caretti mine was a strictly copper producer, right? But I think what we are looking for is it's it's copper, nickel, and cobalt. Or am I fooled? Uh, the Caretti <clears throat> uh, mine ha had a copper grade of about three point eight percent. But what a lot of people don't know is it also had a really significant cobalt signature associated oh, okay. with it as well. It, the cobalt grade at the Caretti mine was 024 percent cobalt, uh, which is which is a very high grade in relationship to a cobalt deposit. Uh, associated with base metals and uh, it was not the priority uh, so uh, the cobalt uh, was not predominantly recovered the copper was the focus and okay. that's this area here has a very very strong cobalt signature to it that has not been capitalized upon and that's what we're intending to do okay thanks So, as Gary stated, there has been significant uh, work uh, performed uh, on the outer lump deposit. Uh, there was uh, uh, multiple drilling campaigns, uh, a, a resource, a, a historical resource, uh, uh, as a historical resource as defined by uh, NI43 101 standards, and, and just kind of a very quick caveat. Uh, we at ExploreX has not, have not verified uh, the resource, we have efficient work on it, uh, but uh, we do believe that the historical work was 100% uh, credible and completely valid uh, to our purpose. So you can see here what the, uh, the combined measured and indicated resource uh, for the Outalampi deposit is. It's 2.25 uh, million tons, uh, grading 0.44% uh, nickel, 0.38% copper, and 0.12% cobalt. One thing I may add as well is the old Coretti mine, uh, which is, uh, as we were showing, located about 200 meters uh, below uh, that Olympi, uh, it still has about a million tons uh, of a resource uh, left there within its uh, within its pillars. So again, at some point in the future, you know, there there may be an opportunity to actually uh, capitalize on that, and in addition to a number of other blue sky opportunities within this this project. Let me ask another question. So, because there was already active mining, so how is the infrastructure around this project? Go ahead, Mike. Uh, <clears throat> it's not very often you walk into a project that has uh, this degree of infrastructure. From basically the uh, the surface support, uh, industrial complexes uh, surrounding the uh, the mining operations, to the actual uh, development, or I should say pre-development, that was performed directly on the Outer Lampy deposit. Uh, there is approximately 2.1 kilometers of underground development uh, consisting of an 850 meter decline and initial stoping that basically opened up the deposit uh, for commercial production at that point in time. Uh, there was originally a 10,000 ton bulk sample that was already taken from the Outer Lampy deposit. So when, when we're walking into this area, uh, we have a decline basically all the way down to the deposit uh, plus initial stoping development. So uh, compared to other uh, potential cobalt uh, deposits uh, around the world, uh, this degree of development and advanced stage of delineation, uh, you really can't find anywhere else. In, in addition to that, uh, we do have uh, uh, the access uh, to a mill facility about 30 kilometers uh, or 40 kilometers away from site here. So uh, uh, they, uh, there has been some initial discussions on potentially coal milling uh, the ore there. Again, greatly reducing the capex of this potential, uh, uh, you know, a, a mine here. And I think that's really the key here and the opportunity that's before us is we're not. Uh, having to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to put uh, 
uh, the underground workings in place and and or the uh, a mill facility uh, in place. Uh, this is uh, uh, pretty much as turnkey as you're going to get here uh, with with obviously some confirmation and an update of uh, the, the feasibility study. Okay. Yeah. So um, so just just taking those characteristics into account, I mean, you'd be sold uh, as is. Um, but then there's also the blue sky potential. And there was significant drilling that delineated mineralization along trend for a 2.5 kilometer long corridor uh, to the to the east of the deposit. So not not only do we have all those attributes that we've already mentioned so far, uh, there's also the the significant potential to pr to bring additional tons into the resource and, and the potential mine plant, a 2.5 kilometer long corridor. And that that's really this is the uh, lump plate deposit here, and then these. The other colors here are all the blue sky potentials. There's there's six six known target areas already uh, within that two and a half kilometer corridor. So uh, again, a very significant potential uh, to increase the resource and uh, and extend uh, the potential mine life here. Okay, let me ask you a question. Um, in our last um, interview, we talked about and then you told us that one of your big partners is Gang Feng, right? Which is a very valuable partner to have. Um, was this project kind of is this kind of going in the Gang Feng joint venture basket or is this like a separate project or how are you going to handle it moving forward? Well, I think with uh, we, with our uh, Gang Feng being a significant shareholder, obviously we would like to uh, work with them on the development uh, and have uh, uh, and and then uh, they have uh, initially um, indicated to us they would uh, definitely be very supportive of the, this pr project here. What we're looking at doing here is obviously taking this thing through to feasibility. We would anticipate that Gan Feng would uh, um, would assist us in an equity further equity placements to allow us to get that uh, in place. Um, obviously, it's it is their goal to be fully uh, vertically integrated within uh, not only lithium but also other e-metals uh, um, such such as cobalt. So I would anticipate uh, their involvement in the development of this project uh, is, is, is very highly likely uh, uh, as we move forward. Uh, the, the terms of their involvement at, at this point um, you know their uh, our agreement with them is that uh, they have the first right uh, to essentially negotiate an offtake agreement on any uh, any production that we have from any of our projects, and that's done at a discount. That's at you know that's a straight negotiated uh, offtake uh, you know at at prevailing market prices. Okay, great, thanks. Okay. And so, just uh, <clears throat> uh, quickly touching upon this slide, uh, just to uh, illustrate what we've uh, the degree of development that's in place. Uh, you can see where the Karate shaft and, and tower is. The, uh, the, the shaft is, is valid to below the, uh, the deposit. And you can see the 850 meter uh, decline that accesses the deposit uh, with also some underground stoping. There's also an existing uh, ventilation shaft in place. So uh, the, the other aspect uh, is that the, uh, 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 the current operators uh, or I should say the vendors, uh, have worked uh, quite diligently you know, over the last uh, couple of years uh, to uh, fully uh, emplace the, uh, the mining concessions, uh, as well as an environmental water and discharge permit. So you can see in the sch uh, schematic here uh, what the intent is uh, to uh, utilize the existing uh, Kareti shaft uh, to dewater uh, the uh, working area uh, and then also and then enter into the decline uh, and, and clear it out uh, to reaccess uh, the deposit. So all this development is in place for us to utilize. It, it, it's actually quite phenomenal. Okay. And just another image of uh, what the, uh, the 2009 uh, feasibility study by uh, Finn Nickel uh, outlined uh, as part of their uh, development plan uh, for the deposit. Uh, so, uh, this just just kind of in the, in, the, in a very quick summary, uh, the deposit has been you know like fairly validated. It is it is uh, it is credible. Uh, we will be working uh, over the next year to uh, complete the uh, the transaction, as well as then 
inject uh, $2.5 million into the operation to basically bring the historic uh, feasibility uh, to uh, current uh, NI43-101 standards. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at within a 12-month period uh, to have uh, a completely redone uh, feasibility and, and outline deposit as well as uh, delineate uh, some of the blue sky uh, potential. Gary, um, Mike just mentioned that it will take some time to complete the transaction. So um, what are the parameters and what needs to be completed? Well, at this point in time, we have uh, engineering due diligence being conducted uh, as we speak. Uh, uh, they will confirm the yeah they'll they'll confirm the historic numbers uh, um, and uh, and you know do the legal due diligence. Uh, we anticipate closing this transaction here in June or July of this year. Uh, then at that point, uh, we will embark on a drill program uh, to uh, to see if in fact. Um, you know the, that'll be confirmation drilling, which will be required uh, for uh, an updating our our um, our feasibility, but also to look at some of the upside potential uh, and some of these other targets. And I think that that would be a, a key thing to embark on. One of the things that which we haven't mentioned here is that this deposit, the way it lies, is much different than some of these other cobalt projects you're hearing about out there that are uh, extremely high grade, but they're also very narrow. This uh, this is a, a very large deposit, underground deposit. It, it, it's amenable to uh, bulk underground mining, uh, which again uh, lowers the cost tremendously. And again, very little waste. Uh, this deposit is anywhere between one and thirty meters thick. It's 150 to 250 meters wide. It's uh, it's well over a kilometer in length uh, at at this point, and uh, and and potentially longer. Uh, so these are the things that. Um, that really make this a very, very economic or potentially economic, uh, you know, mining situation for us. Unlike some of these very small, narrow, high-grade uh, mines, where uh, it takes a lot to get any kind of tonnage, but also you have a lot of waste that's involved as well. So that's one of the things that, um, again, we'll be uh, fine-tuning here on our updated feasibility. You know, will be, of course, the cost of mining and uh, and economic potential as we uh, conclude our feasibility. But uh, so yeah, that's kind of where we're we're looking at for the next year. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, and and just one uh, additional comment: um, the deposit on average is only a hundred meters below surface, so it is shallow. Uh, part of uh, part of the extent of it actually uh, skies out, uh, so that will also be very beneficial in regards to the economical economics of the uh, of the ore body, um, because it's. There's a pre-existing uh, decline to it, as well as it's so shallow. So it's it, it's going to be uh, highly amenable to to an uh, to an eco economic solution. Okay. So, and then just back to your original question: What needs to be done to close this thing? Uh, okay. Where you know, once we conclude our due diligence, uh, we have an option to either buy a, buy out a 91% uh, interest outright or embark on a three-year option and uh, okay. those terms will be finalized and and uh, and of course announced uh, you know upon our closing here in the in the next couple of months okay okay one of the things that so, we're, uh, we're Sorry, one of the things we're looking to do uh, in the meantime is is, is advance the Cook uh, Brook Cobalt Project in New Brunswick. Um, we identified uh, this is a, a fairly exciting yet undrilled target uh, early on, and I think uh, one of the things that, uh, that that Mike has done a lot of work on uh, um, with our team is is been able to identify these very good quality projects and uh, the Kuguk uh, project is uh, uh, one of the ones that we would like to advance uh, along as well and uh, and hopefully get a drill project uh, on it uh, early on uh, uh, this spring and uh, Mike if you want to give a little more detail on uh, where we're at and uh, and what makes it so exciting well it's the uh, the size potential and and that's that's one of the parameters that uh, that we're looking for uh, again, we're not looking for a small, uh, necessarily high-grade uh, tonnage, but we're looking for something that has some real meat on the bones. And the Kagut Brook property has that potential. Uh, it's part of the uh, the Bathurst uh, mining camp, which is also another uh, well-known uh, mining camp in in the world uh, that does produce some some sizable deposits. It's not necessarily known for cobalt, 
but there is some uh, cobalt uh, signatures uh, within the camp, and the Kugut Brook probably has one of the highest cobalt mineralizing signatures. Uh, this property uh, has not ever been drilled before, but has had some significant looks to it from past operators. And it's extremely intriguing because of the grades uh, that are found in the, the streams. Uh, so uh, if you can look here on this map, um, there's a, these two creeks uh, are 2.5 kilometers apart. Uh, each of those sample dots are, are represent probably about a hundred meter distance between the samples. And the grades that you find in the shovelfuls of silt at the base of those creeks is greater uh, than the outer lumpy deposit has. Uh, you're looking at grades up to 0.6% cobalt, which is, which is just uh, uh, unbelievable for, for how high those grades are. And, and that's simply from, from the silt that's found in the creeks. And what, you're, what we're, it's trying to indicate is the, that cobalt just doesn't come from anywhere. Uh, it's a bullseye target. Uh, there's, there's very little cobalt signature around it. And then all of a sudden, you come here to these two creeks, and it's just you know, uh, uh, like a wow. Um, what we're contemplating is that the mineralization that we see in the creeks represents what is just hidden underneath the till in this very spot. And there has been significant previous work done on the property to basically tee it up for a drill program. Uh, there's been multiple campaigns of geophysics uh, that have delineated a conductive zone with it, which is a similar signature to kind of a massive sulfide. Uh, it is also perfectly in alignment. Uh, this is a mag uh, survey. It's perfectly in alignment with the stratigraphy that you see there, which is also very similar to what you find in the in the Bathurst mining camp for very kind of horizontal uh, beds of, of sulfides. And then one of the most refined sort of like geophysical tools that you can use is an induced polarization survey, which, which basically will delineate the really high conductive drill targets. And also coincident uh, with the anomalies in the creek and the mag are very low resistivity, which is kind of high conductivity drill targets. So there's all this preliminary work that has been done on this extremely intriguing target that has the potential for high tonnage and it's never been drilled before. So this is something that could be a huge win for the company at a very low entry cost. So it, it, it really fits uh, what we're trying to do in ExploreX is to try and look for those projects out there that can really provide some impetus to the company and actually have some real meat on the bones at the end of the day. All right. So like I say, the, our main focus will be uh, moving forward, will be these two projects, the Adelompe and the Kaguk in the immediate future. Um, our projects in Ontario, uh, uh, we'll, we'll continue on working on those as well. Uh, but again, our priority is, is you know, for obvious reasons, take the projects that are, have, have the biggest potential and let's focus in on those uh, in the meantime. We're also continuing on, uh, you know, what, what's next for us is we're continuing on to identify and source uh, other e-metal opportunities uh, around the world and that won't stop. We've been given a mandate by our significant shareholders to uh, essentially find uh, good developable, you know, uh, projects that can be developed, uh, you know, again, to supply the world's, uh, you know, demand for these, uh, these, these commodities. So it's, we're in a, a unique situation, having the support of a, uh, you know, a, a very large uh, lithium uh, uh, manufacturer and now a battery manufacturer in China. Uh, that gives us a bit of a leg up, uh, especially on a financial side, but also on a technical side and uh, what is really required and where the market's really going. And so I think that's, that's what really differentiates Explorex from a lot of the other companies out there. You know, I th I think that Gang Feng is is in a good is a good team with you because you are the kind of their project scout. 
that's how I would call it, right? So, yeah, so, it's a... so they, they, send, they give you like a wallet of, of cash, yeah, and send you all around the world besides the DRC, probably not the DRC, yes. but besides, all around the world to scout for the best projects, yeah, bring them to the table. And um, if they like it, then you can team up with them. And if not, but you still like it, you can still get your hands on it like you did with some of the other projects, right? Kind mm -hmm. of creating a project bank and maybe looking for um, joint venture partners outside of Gang Feng later on down the road. So I think yeah. that's a great approach, yeah. Um, and it, it sounds like um, you will have a lot of fun and also the shareholders should have a lot of fun because remember, yeah, you only have like, what what is the, the share structure? It's only like- There are there's 16 million, million shares. Yeah, yeah, 16, so, yeah. It's very, very uh, good good share structure. Um, yeah. Obviously, uh, there will be some dilution along the way to develop these projects, but you know, um, you know, we're, we're definitely off to a really good start. And, uh, you know, with uh, 16 million out, 21 fully diluted, you know, we've got a long ways to go here. Uh, and uh, I think uh, the shareholders will definitely benefit uh, from our, our share capital lease. Yeah, and look at the share price that you just brought that up. Yeah, like um, mining over the last little while, little month or a couple of months, yeah, has been in a decline. Like overall, I'm not sure about the cobalt shares, but, but yeah. like, if you look at gold, silver, copper, yeah, they're all going down. If you're holding kind of the last weeks, you're, you're actually up from 30 cents to like 40, right? So that's 30% yeah, yeah. uh, gain. And even compared to, to November, yeah, so you're kind of flat. So that's all looks good to me, yeah, but again, um, I'm biased, of course, and um, <laughs> I, I know those guys for, for quite some time. Um, so I can only urge my viewers and, and, and listeners and readers to uh, start their own due diligence, yeah, um, and, and I will link around this video, I will also link the presentation and I will uh, put a link to the interview that we did in December. Yeah, where you get like the, uh, an overview on the other projects. And yeah, so I think you're looking into some excitement uh, over the next little while, as you indicated. Yeah, there will be some developments, there will be some um, news releases, yeah, which are kind of the flesh to the bone for the shareholders. And yeah, thank you very much. I think the, the final words is yours. Yeah, just maybe to wrap it up. Well, th well, thanks again, uh, Michael. It's always a good opportunity to uh, uh, to uh, to have a venue to tell our story. We're we're sure. very excited on uh, the opportunities that uh, that we have before us. Uh, you know, the uh, the new acquisition is really catapulting us into uh, into the main stage, essentially as far as. Uh, cobalt producers go, um, and uh, we look forward to that uh, that transition from an exploration company to a mining company, and of course with our uh, our major shareholders' uh, help. And uh, I think our portfolio of projects will continue to grow. Uh, and uh, I look forward to uh, giving you another update. Uh, you know, hopefully within the next uh, next couple of months. That sounds great. And I'm, I'm really curious what kind of country you're going to discover for the next project, because that means you have to learn another language because you're fantastic in pronouncing all these strange Finnish uh, names. Right? So, so let's wait and see what, what you're coming up for um, right now. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Michael.